Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak midsize with gem set bezel. This is the Royal Oak 15451 ST. 37 millimeters in stainless steel. It is 9.9 .9 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, it is 46.6 millimeters, and if we include the little intermediate links, the total rigid distance across the wrist is 48.7. Now, the watch in steel wears nicely. It is a handsome match for my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and low enough that it'll slide underneath a dress cuff. So this could be a watch for a man or a woman. The combination of diamonds and a bright white metal on a polished bezel is surprisingly subtle, as from a distance you don't immediately pick up the stones. It has 0.9 carats set into the bezel with 40 diamonds, and if you wish it will slide underneath the cuff, I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Remember, a Royal Oak's gonna wear a little bit bigger than its rated size. This wears more like a 39 or a 40. Taking a look at the bracelet, the bezel, and the case, you can see part of the reason this watch costs what it does isn't so much the bezel as everything else. The finishing on a Royal Oak is surpassing, and it has been since the original bout in 1972. Satination, polishing, sharp breaks between them, and intricate finishing details like polished interfaces to intermediate links. All of it is here. You can see that there's longitudinal satin on the tops of the links, then vertical satin on the flanks. Removable links are fixed by screws. It said that the bracelets for Royal Oaks in various metals take somewhere between nine and 11 hours to hand finish, and you can certainly see why that is the case. We have a rugged double folding clasp. You can see internally it's both media blasted and satinated. It does have a sequential close. One side closes before the other. It opens when you press both triggers, so like a sports watch should be, it's secure when on the wrist. The original Royal Oak bezel was inspired by the shape of a vintage diving helmet and designer Gerald Genta, who was first and foremost a jewelry designer decided that his sports watch should be fully integrated. It should look like a bracelet on the wrist, a bracelet that just happens to incorporate a timepiece. So the watch does have the all-of-a-piece look of a bracelet, and it has that lovely rounded octagonal bezel here elaborated with a combination of white gold bezel bolts in hexagonal form, and then those 40 brilliant cut diamonds. You can see that they are identical in carats, clarity, and colors, so there's no gradient whatsoever. As has always been the case with standard Royal Oaks as opposed to offshores, the bolts are in gold, and you can actually see that white gold is quite a bit warmer than the white silver of steel. The timepiece also features a screw-down hexagonal crown that mirrors the shape of the bezel bolts, and if you're ever wondering how they managed to align them, the word bolt is the key. There's a nut on the opposite side, so these can be sunk in in whatever orientation the watchmaker wants. They're not screwed in like a screw. The dial is a grand tapisserie, or a large hobnail, cut on a pantograph lathe, which is a 19th century mimicry engine, and it is essentially an old-world slow-rolling scroll by which the template from the big model is transcribed by pantograph to a small brass disc. So you have thousands thousands of little details in addition to the large hobnails on this dial. Once it's cut by pantograph, it is then galvanized black, and of course since 2012, AP has been good about making sure that the date disc color matches the dial color of its Royal Oaks. And of course this 37 millimeter size first bowed in 2012. And since 2012, I should add, AP has made these hobnail dials in-house. The logo, the indices, and the hands are all white gold, because over time, white gold does not tarnish, fade, cloud, or change color. And the watch is fairly well loomed. It is a sports watch in steel. It has a screw-down crown and a 50-meter water resistance rating that is sufficient for surface swimming. The use of diamonds with a steel watch is bold, though not quite as revolutionary as was during the 1990s when Technomarine admittedly was first, but Patek Philippe perhaps broached the topic in the high end of the market and made it socially acceptable by including diamonds on the ladies' steel quartz 24. So Technomarine was first, but Patek is probably the most immediate reason why AP is doing steel diamond watches in the year 2022. You can see that the faceting, the break between satin and polish is just gorgeous, and the character lines of the bezel continued 
into the case back through the mid case, you can really see the consistency of line all the way around. The case back is much like the bezel. It is a rounded octagon. You can see here that there is a caliber 3120 internally. The rotor includes the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet families, because after all, AP wants you to know, since 1875, it is the oldest Swiss watch company still owned and run by members of the founding family. It's a bi-directional winder to banish the unidirectional wobble of something like a Valjoux 7750, and AP uses unlubricated ceramic rotor bearings for higher efficiency and minimal maintenance. The movement is an auto winder, of course, with a 60-hour power reserve, stop seconds, a quick set date, and a bat wing like full balance bridge with a gyromax style free sprung balance beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. The movement is a 40 joule caliber and with the combination of a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance, the watch is also quite shock tolerant. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.